The devil's poor. <laughs> home again yes do you really think it's a good idea to be put up by your sister-in-law in the country why not my brother and I lived there as children and he died in the place it'd still be better in a hotel and expensive too you know yeah but I came here to see London the house of my brother's near the city we can go to London as often as you like Robert look there are our bags Robert believes he's going to be kept prisoner in the house. <laughs> Don't believe everything Carol tells you. Don't worry, I know Carol. Robert. Tell me, how long are you going to stay in England? A few days. I've got to return to my work. That goes for me. Short stay. You're both very busy, I see. Yes, we are, Fiona. And what do you do, Robert? Professor of Latin. Oh, how interesting. Hmm, you think so? I shouldn't drive faster in this weather. I'm sorry about the time we're taking, but the side roads in England are very narrow. I wouldn't worry about it. Carol's asleep. A cigarette? No, thanks. I smoke a pipe, Fiona. Shall I? Mm. Here you are. Do we have much to go? No, we're almost there. <sighs> this fresh air makes me so sleepy. Oh, no. oh, that's an old wives' tale. What's wrong? No electricity. Wouldn't you know it? This is always happening. Well, maybe it's the fuses. No, I don't think so. I bet the line is down. Why don't we go to the kitchen and light some candles? Okay. Yes. Okay. Through here. It's a terrible night out. It's been like this all summer long. I'm not surprised that so few people live around here. The house has changed. Yes, I like things old-fashioned. Tomorrow I'll show you the house, Carol. Why do you have all these candlesticks? Looks like an antique shop. I'm very fond of candlelight. It makes things intimate. You know, I think Fiona's very romantic. <laughs> it's just that I prefer natural things to artificial ones. And why do you have all these black candles? What do you think they're for, Carol? What I mean is black is so dreary. Yes. 
But I like me. What would you like to drink? Drink? I don't have any tea or coffee or, or anything that's hot, so it'll have to be alcohol. Oh, that's what I wanted anyway. Aren't you cold? Why don't we light a fire in the chimney? Of course, everything's set to go. Well, I'll do it. Well, now, what would you like to drink? What do you have? Uh, whiskey, gin, vodka. Uh, whiskey for me. Uh, let's see, cognac, sherry, but there's no ice. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll have a glass of sherry, please. You're more beautiful now than the last time you were here. Thank you. I think you've lost a little weight. You think so? Perhaps a little bit. Don't know. You remind me of your brother. More every day. There's a family resemblance. Only on the outside. You have a better character. But they tell me the contrary. Oh, they're wrong. I was looking at these lithos. They're very interesting. They're simply reproductions. They were never in this house before. No. No, I don't think so. Are you interested in demonology? Only certain angles. I find all those things abominable. I don't reject anything out of hand. That attitude is more intelligent. Persons of importance are continuously making pacts with the devil. Drew and I were always discovering interesting things during the last few years. Even though your sister-in-law does seem a little eccentric, uh, she's nice when you get down to it. Fiona can be enchanting when she wants. Well, she was today. Yes, I know how she acted. Hey, what's the matter with you? Me? Nothing. Why? I don't know. You seem nervous since we arrived here. I would like to know what she insinuated about my brother having discovered very interesting things during the last few years when referring to those horrendous reproductions in the living room. And what about the black candles? Yeah, they are a little strange. I'm thinking about a book on witchcraft I read many years ago. In their gatherings, they always use black candles. Maybe your sister-in-law is a witch. And you never knew about it. <laughs> At any rate, when the devil tempted Eve, he found his first willing servant. At least that's what the good book says. That's why all you women are a little bewitched. Baby to see you spent too long in the seminary. They corrupted you badly. <laughs> <laughs> I simply can't imagine my brother living in this atmosphere. What are you talking about? You mean those reproductions and the black candles? <gasps> what 
are you doing here, Cal? Oh, I just had such a fright. What happened? You might think I'm still half asleep, Fiona. But I just saw a bearded man through the window. I bet you think I've had a nightmare. I believe you did. It's going to be out there in the middle of the night. I don't know, but I saw him. Carol, apart from a few eccentric foreigners who live around here, I can assure you that this zone is the safest in the county. I'll get you a tea, then upstairs to rest. You look very tired. What's wrong? Do you smell incense? It's this. Is that tea? They're homegrown herbs, really very beneficial for nervous conditions. She's Drew's sister, right? Yes. And she saw you. Hmm. I'm sorry. You should be prudent, Reverend. If she suspects, we might have serious headaches. Why is she here? Probably to arrange the last details of the inheritance, Reverend. Her lawyers in London will take care of it. What happens if she finds out what we did to her brother? How would she find out? Drew spoke too much toward the end. He was very foolish. I know it. That's why we had to kill him. There are many who hate us. And who also fear us. Don't worry about those things. Who's accompanying her? Her friend. But there's no problem there, I think. But I beg you, Reverend, please leave. She could still be awake. The autumn equinox is near. When we celebrate the Sabbath, they shouldn't be here. They'll have gone by then. Let me take care of it all, OK? Why don't you go? And tomorrow we'll speak about it. Through here. Clock. It's rather late to get up. Do you like jam? It's strawberry conserved here. Thanks. Uh, thanks, yes, or thanks, no? Thanks, yes. Uh, you may use my car to go to London. It would be easier for all if we took the train. As you wish. There's a train every hour. How long does it take to get to London? Oh, about half an hour. The express is even faster. Fiona, I'd like to visit Drew's grave. All right. We can go now. I'll accompany you. It isn't far. Thank you. You don't have to go unless you like. I'll see you in an hour or two. Hmm? All right. I think your brother has achieved eternal rest. Did he suffer? No, it happened very quickly. All of a sudden, a man who was very active left us forever. When the doctor showed up to sign the death certificate, I was asked if I agreed on the certification of embolism or if I requested an autopsy. Well, I accepted the first of the two, Carol, because an autopsy wouldn't do anything.
What's the matter? Where did you get that? Do you like it? You little whore. When I saw you up in the house, I knew you were doing something. What the fuck are you up to? Careful, you son of a bitch. And worry about the animals. It's the only thing you're good for. Which fucking witch you are? One day you'll be discovered. And the lynchers is like in medieval times. Oh, don't be afraid, you fool. Nothing will happen to you. If the folks around here only knew... Yeah, those in our coven are important. Haven't you found out yet? Go and tell that renegade reverend to show here tonight. And to bring that bitch along well prepared for what's waiting for her. You drank them last night. Be a good girl. I take them all the time. It stinks all over the house. What is it? I don't know exactly the name of the plant. I was given these herbs long ago. Drink it. It's really awful. <clears throat> when you're accustomed to it, you'll drink it every day. Drew wrote me a strange letter before he died. I hadn't planned mentioning it, but now I think it's better if we talk about it. He told me in the letter that he was unhappy and afraid. He didn't go into detail. The letter was ambiguous, seemed like it was written in a hurry. What caught my attention was that the handwriting was different. Did he say any more? No. I told you his letter was ambiguous. Besides, the letter itself was very brief. Just a note. A desperate message. It was a letter from a terrified man. Aren't you dramatizing a bit? I didn't want to speak about this matter earlier. But there are questions that should be resolved. And what are they? I prefer that you and I speak honestly so that we can trust each other. Of course. Well, no. We really hated each other, if that's what you want to know. I suspected that in your relationship. Oh, yes? Well, now. Yes, but your life together doesn't interest me. Your brother was an alcoholic, plastered day and night. His career was beginning to go downhill. I'm not surprised that his handwriting had changed. Sorry, I didn't know that. Mm. It doesn't matter. Better to forget it all and start over. Your brother was one of our best lawyers, Carol, and a personal friend. We were all terribly affected by his sudden death. 
We don't know what could have pushed Andrew to drink. It was inexplicable. Because everything happened so rapidly. I told him once he should cut down on his drinking, or it would ruin his career. And it was truly a pity, because he was incredibly successful. You see, Andrew was our best lawyer. Sometimes we kidded him about his unnaturally good fortune, telling him that he had a pact in secret with the devil. Do you know Fiona? Naturally, my dear. A woman who is bewitching and charming. They were the perfect couple. Did he ever refer to a diabolic sect? No. But I'd like to be frank. Your brother seemed to be very frightened. Here's his last will and testament. Everything's in order. Thank you. Needless to say, anything you may need of me, you may rest assured you have a friend at your complete disposal. Thank you, Mr. Connor. It's wonderful I can count on friends like you. Nice seeing you Goodbye. again. Goodbye. Say hello to Fiona for me. Oh. What's wrong? A little dizzy. It's best that you sit down for a little while. I'll have my secretary make you a little tea. This is the odor you can smell throughout the house, isn't it? Does it bother you? No. Now I've gotten used to it. Have you never heard speak of Mandragora? Yes, it's the plant that the witches use for their magic potions in the Middle Ages. Uh, so they say. This is Lathrus odoratum, and this one is Lobularia maritima. You're an expert botanist. I'm only interested in a few strange seeds, making teas. I like curative herbs. And lethal ones? Them too. This is Digitalis purpurea that in England we call foxglove. You say it's lethal? No, it's completely inoffensive. This is my favorite one, purple berries. What are they for? <laughs> to make languid lovers more ardent. Aphrodisiac. Do you have any marijuana around here? Oh, no. I'm really stupid. I could have made a fortune if I'd wanted to, Robert. I hope I'm not boring you with all these stories. If you'd have gone to London with Carol, you wouldn't be bored. I'm okay right where I am, in the midst of these herbs, oh, and with your stories, as you call them. <laughs> Thank you. And besides, this is a very busy day for Carol. I think that London and its museums can wait. How did you get to know Carol? It was by chance, as happens in the majority of the cases. It was shortly after I got out of the seminary. You in a seminary? <laughs> yes. I was fed up when they ordained me. Well, then, this place should seem like a revelation to you, with its allusions to the devil. No, you're mistaken. Satanism is an offshoot of Christianity, you know. I studied the question for nine years. So you can imagine, I do know all there is to know. You're not an exorcist. No. If we think about all those fallen angels and their representatives on Earth, you have to admit that submission to the Church was imposed on us. Submission to the devil was our own free choice. I think that's how witches and warlocks first came about. The first Satanists. The idolaters of evil. But good and evil are only words, only our instincts. Tell us what we want to know. What's wrong with you? You're becoming hysterical. I tell you, Robert, I brought that necklace with me. You know, the one I like so much. I'm sure I put it in my luggage. Someone has stolen it. Are you sure? Probably you've left it at home. Something's wrong here, Robert. There are too many things happening in this house that I don't understand. The black candles, my dizziness, 
and the face I saw through the window the first night. And now my necklace has disappeared. What are you insinuating? There are such phenomena as malevolent powers that are able to influence an individual against his will, Robert. The people who wield those powers require a garment to a favorite article of the person they wish to influence. You're really serious, aren't you? Of course I am. Because I believe that there are forces that we are unable to perceive. What kind of forces? Occult. The occult. I believe that I'm an open-minded man, Carol. But today, witches and warlocks aren't burned at the stake. Witches and wizards have disappeared. They burned them in the Middle Ages, and they weren't witches, just hysterical females. And all those strange things I have observed since we arrived. Any person who is really normal would call them a coincidence. I don't think they're a coincidence. At least not that kind, Robert. You're very immature, and that's your reaction, Carol. This is going to make black matters. Or whatever you call those trifling things. Anyway, I won't stop until I find out what happened to my brother. Well, if you let your nerves run away with you, you'll really become sick. I'm not sick. Their nerves. And when your nerves get the best of you, you should try to relax them. And my dizziness? Take tranquilizers. And Fiona's teas are good for you. It's the best thing you can do. And if I were you, I'd stay in bed today. You're in very good hands. She's suspicious. What do you think? We decided you'd take care of everything. I'm trying to. So what's going on? Nothing's going on. She just doesn't trust me and she has a will of her own. We must find another way of dealing with her. It wouldn't be advisable to have her drugged indefinitely, Fiona. Yes, I told you that. Well, we need a quick solution that doesn't arouse suspicions. I don't think we should resort to violence. I think the police would see a connection with the death of her brother. We need to think of another way of dealing with Carol. Go ahead. Confuse her mentally. A state of agitation that would make her commit actions that afterwards she would completely report herself for. She would prefer to leave and forget about it all. You're right, you know. And if she tells the police, I think it'll be too late for any suspicions. The best thing would be a mysterious ailment, Doctor. An illness that's hard to diagnose. An unexpected stroke. Like her brother. But once she's far away. And her boyfriend? Yeah. What do we do with him? He says he's defrocked. An ex-priest. An unbeliever, you know. I will handle time you got up, sleepyhead. Hey, it's almost 11, you know. Get up. You didn't come here to sleep. Come on. What's wrong? Aren't you feeling well? Why are you dressed? I returned from London. 
I could spend the night in a hotel. You were in London all last night? I thought you might be sleeping, and I decided to spend the night now. Thank you. I'm serious. It really stinks, you know. Sulfur, that's it. What are you sniffing at? You look like a rabbit. Here she is at last. Carol, I'd like to present you to all these nice people who've come for tea and are so anxious to meet you. Reverend Hooper and his goddaughter, little Annalise. She's such a bright student of architecture. Mr. and Mrs. Gonzalez and Dr. Gaunt. Carol, you seem to look better today. What is it? You're not the same person. It's not possible. I don't understand. What's wrong with you? It was wrong bringing you here. Oh, but why don't we leave for London? You know that would offend Fiona, Carol. To hell with Fiona and all those weird foreigners, people who hang around her. They're like a bunch of vultures. They're very nice persons, Carol. Nice? You believe they're nice persons? They put me off always, watching and so quiet. And that reverend. Every time he's around, I get nervous, observing me as if I were naked. Maybe he likes you. Oh, no. Not bad taste, you know. 
When I think about him, I get nauseous. Poor man, he believes you're cured. Have you seen his fingernails? I think that one of them looks like a claw, an evil bird of prey. I don't like your teas. I don't need them, and I'm convinced they're not good for me. Dr. Gaunt recommended them, you know. I realize that, but I don't want any. Well, why don't you drink this one that I've just prepared? Well, all right, I'll drink it later. Fiona, there's a big door underneath the stairs. I suppose it's the passage to the cellar. Yes. It's closed, you know. I believe so. Is there anything in the cellar? <laughs> what a question, Carol. What you always find in cellars. Heating systems, water pipes, and old odds and ends. Why did you circle this date on the calendar? That's when autumn starts. At the beginning of every new season, I normally get together with a few friends to have a party. And by the way, you're invited to one we're having tomorrow. Aren't you dressing for dinner? Yes. What's wrong today is that people are completely crazy, inventing ailments that really don't exist. Everyone suffers from something. In the majority of cases, it's simply psychosomatic. Our century is one of psychiatrists and psychoanalysts. But I think we should return to the olden times. We should get back to nature and eat what our great-grandparents did. Take herbs, for instance. They're much better. Robert! Don't be afraid of me. I'm not going to do anything. Let go of me. You're one of them. Let go of me. Everything is okay. It's okay. Carol, it's a new dimension that's unknown to us. <sighs> it's marvelous. Why don't we leave? We go away from here. This is a nightmare, I think. I beg you, Robert, in the name of God. You know that God is nothing more than a metaphor. Just pageantry that's slowly losing its appeal. I don't know how they poisoned you, Robert. You changed. No. Don't leave. Robert. I need you. You can escape from all this. You planning on going somewhere? Leave. Where to? That's crazy. And you know how you are when you get drunk. Go home. When I want, I can finish. With all this crap. Oh, you're making threats, huh? I'd be careful if I were you. You are the ones that should be careful. Because if I feel like it, I can send you all to prison for the rest of your lives. All over. 
John, where are you going? What is it to you, bitch? John! Robert? Robert? If you hear us, you'll kill us. Be watching me. Trust Ooh. me. There's no time for explanations. Get out of here before they do the same to you as they did to you. Brother. Are you referring yes, to Fiona Yes, yes, yes. She's a witch like the rest of them. They all are. If I were you, I'd get out of here, but don't go to the police. They'd laugh. They have accomplices everywhere. I would advise the priest. He's the only one I can help you as a servant of God. Do as I say. But what about Robert? I refuse to leave him here. I believe you've lost him forever. He's one of them. Leave here while you still have time. No! 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 You bitch! Stay there! That's enough. Don't slap her anymore. You won't cause any more problems, will you? You witch! You pay for this! You poisoned my brother! I know you did! You're going to be Satan's bride. Our Lady of the Sabbath. You mix up the potions, and you two prepare her and dress her. The Sabbath is an orgy of wickedness in which all the instincts are given free reign. Sleep, huh? We're here. Did you have a nice rest? Yes, it's yes, terrible. I did. Night. Thank you. Oh no. Oh. Well, there are no lights. They go out every time it rains, you know. 
Could it be the fuses? No, I think the lines are down. We'll go into the kitchen and light some candles. Almost looks like we're going to celebrate rights to the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Who knows? What is it? You're shivering. Did you catch cold? It was when you were asleep in the car. What's wrong? Don't you feel well? I have some very special herbs. I cultivate plants that can bring you relief. No, no. I feel okay. Thank you. Did I frighten you? He's my uncle, Reverend Hoover. I was awake, and I heard your car. And I strip? Very good. Thank you. 